Hello everyone. Uh, please take a look at the picture. And you may wonder to yourself, what type of fruit is this, right? So how on earth there's some fruit that have so many wide area and hollow heart like this? And then take a look at this picture, which is the same fruit, but only 400 years later. So this is the watermelon. What have it changed? And you also may recently heard about a boy that got a miracle, a treatment which is the most expensive medication in the world that cure a disease that could have paralyzed him for the rest of his life. How do these two of these stories have in common? So they both involve in some kind of technology uh, and is called genetic engineering. So take a look at um, our body in here, in human body, and think of it as in a complex machine. That's, I think, is one of the most incredibly complex machines in the world, and uh, it's composed of millions, if not billions, or trillion tiny workers working together in a perfect harmony, carrying on tasks day after day, year after year. And like any other living organism on this earth, we don't even know or even understand how all of this work is a swap, right? So, a lot of questions regarding how our body was built, how it was together. So, it wasn't until the 20th century that we have the first understanding, we decipher the fundamental building block of life, which is the DNA or the double helix. And then when uh, one project that changed all of our understanding regarding the manual or the instruction of life, which is the Human Genome Project. The Human Genome Project is a grand project that lasts over a decade with a budget of $3 billion. And it involved 20 institutions, top institutions across the world just to decipher, just to decode one human genome. So, after this project was finished, we got like the whole collection of human genes. So you got the word genome in here, we got the gene and the ohm surface, right? So the ohm surface is means the whole collection. So genome does mean the whole collection of genes. So, after this project, we like having the instruction applied just in our hand. The scientists, they understand how all of this gene making the body. And from then, this discovery, this research, is accelerating the whole field of biotechnology. You can take a look at this graph, and you may see that the whole field is accelerating at the rate that even faster than the more laws. So it was, was like more than a billion dollars to decipher, to decode just one genome, right? So right now, it costs just only a few hundred dollars, and you can have the instruction of your life, the manual of life in your hand. However, understanding the manual of life is just part of the equation, right? So after getting this, what next? The question comes really natural that how do we edit this one? How do we improve the genetic that lie in the instruction? So let's get back to our ancestor, right? So we, the human, is like the only species on this earth that know how to breed other species. So that makes us really special, right? So un our ancestors, like thousand years ago, they don't even understand a word like gene, like DNA. So how do they do this? How do they uh, selectively breed other species? Or how do they shape other species into their will? So take a look at this picture. Let's say uh, they got two cows, one with a really big heel lamp, and one with very big four legs, right? So they now they want the best of both. What do they do? They breed them. They breed them, and then they hope that one of their offspring will have their desired child. So from that, they keep refining, they keep refining this process over and over again, years after years, generation after generation, until they got what they want until we got what we have today for the uh, spaces. 
So after understanding the whole collection of genetic, the whole collection of manual and instruction, we can do this much faster than them. Wrong. We can identify, we can isolate which part of the body is controlled by which gene. And then we can isolate them, we can transfer them in the tool called the gene transfer process. And using this, we can speed up the process much faster. However, you may see that there are some undesired chains that kind of link together and carry on to the next generation, right? So the very next question is that how can we do this really fast but also accurate? So let's say if we're still understanding all of the mapping of the chain of the gene in our body, right? So what if we got a seizure, a very precision seizure at the molecular level that can cut that can slice right where it needed. So after that, we got like a superior gene transfer, right? So we can successfully isolate exactly what we were, exactly the chain, and then transfer them together in a very easy and under, easy to understand manner. So when we take a step back to look at the whole process, we see from the first domestication, from the first selective breeding, it took place 20,000 years ago in a process called domestication. However, the first gene transfer is happened just 50 years ago. And the superior gene transfer that I talked about, the molecular scissor, with a name that CRISPR-Cas9, this has happened around 10 years ago. And it even got the Nobel Prize for the inventor around five years ago in 2020. So the whole process that once took thousands of years, right now, the accelerating at the rate of 15 years, 5 or 10 years. So what next? What lying ahead for all of us? And all of this one, all of this is not only the research, it's not only the study that lay in some paper. Some of this, we also see the real world application, real world practical application right now. For example, the BT corn is a strain of corn that has been genetically modified to be intrinsically protected against corn borer. So, in turn, they can yield higher and naturally, because they are already protected into the corn borer, so they don't need to use the insecticide anymore. So, kind of, we combat world hunger and making the planet greener at the same time. Other group, they go even further than this. Other group, they think of that. The bacteria, the microalgae, how, how about we modify them into the factory? The factory that can convert pollutant, that can convert bio waste into energy, into biofuel. So that's what they did. They modify the gene of microalgae, of bacteria, and then converting the, use them to convert the pollutant and waste into energy, into biofuel. So across all of the fuel, this technology is changing the face of our world. So the question let me, how about us? Can this tool improve us too? So in, 2000 and, uh, in 2017, FDA, which is the Food and Drug Administration in the U.S., they approved the first genetic editing therapy on human. So the name of the drug was Lux Turner. It cures a disease that can cause early blindness. So for this treatment, it was the kind of pivotal. It was a turning point because before that, no one talked about a drug that can change the genetic of human. So you think of this the drug the genetic editing therapy as some kind of the uh, grammarly birth of the gene. It's fixing the typo in your gene. So this one, this kind of therapy is like fixing the root cause of the problem. And in 2022, the total number of genetic editing therapy raised to a total of five. But this year, this year, 2024, it could be the true inflection point. FDA is expected to rely between 10 to 15 more genetic editing therapies. 
we kind of witnessing a fundamental change in the way that disease can be treated. The disease that one can be considered as premature death sentence can be now treated completely. And it ranges from blood disease, muscular disease, and even some type of cancer. And not only in the treatment field, the new type of technology is changing the face of all healthcare from the preventative treatment. Right now, we can even prevent the disease even before it shows its earlier sign of symptom. And we can also optimize the treatment so that we can minimize the side effect, but maximize the effectiveness of this drug. And talking about nutrition and fitness, so have you ever wondered that why do you eat like half the portion of your friends, of your partner, but you will gain a lot more weight, right? So with the personal life nutrition and personal life fitness, this was the past. And you can also discover a lot more about yourself than you can ever done before. You can even understand where your ancestry come from, how they kind of travel across the continent to meet at some point in the history. All of this in Daojin, and it could be achieved in this generation. So I talk a lot about how the world is changing, but this change is not only in the world, but it's happening right here in Vietnam right now. In 2023, a project named The Right Medicine for Every Child would launch. So in this project, its aim is to screen the pediatric patient with disadvantages for the drug allergy. So when the children they are diagnosed with epilepsy, the doctor kind of faced with two choices. One is that they can prescribe a classic treatment that kind of cheap, however, they have, have a very high risk of allergy. And the second option is that they can prescribe a much more expensive treatment that three or four times higher, but much safer. It's a kind of dilemma for the doctor, especially in the children with the disadvantages. So in this project, they do the genetic testing for three, for all 3,000 children, and they found out that around 2,000 children, they, they can use the classic treatment without any risk. And the rest of the children, they have to use the modern treatment so that they are protected against the allergy. So when this project concluded, zero is the number of cases for the patient that we need of drug allergy and drug reaction. So we not only save the money for the economy, but also protect the patient from any kind of adverse reaction and allergy if possible. So this project, some may say that they have not only won the heart of the children, but also the heart of the doctor too. Okay, so I talk a lot about how this fascinating technology, how this amazing, powerful technology, right? However, they are saying, with great power come great responsibility, right? A lot of the questions are left to be addressed. Who get access to this technology? Who sets the boundary of what can be done and what cannot be done? So all of this are difficult questions. And we have to be careful to navigate in this field because if we not be careful, we can inevitably create a dystopian future where the new type of social economic gap is built. So I think that that's why we all gather here today as the scientist, as the entrepreneur, as policy maker, and also the future of the nations. So this question is our responsibility to work all together to discuss with transparency, with responsibility. So genetic engineering, genetic decoding, they are those tools. And like any other tool, it's up for the user to use them wisely and responsibly. So let's harness the power of this technology to create prosperity. Let's step into the new dog. Thank you. <laughs>